is your New Year's resolution to lose weight or get healthy? 43% of New Year's resolutions are that same thing. Next being personal improvement at 21%, which can also have a lot to do with health in some cases. But 80% of New Year's resolutions quit by mid-February and people lose their motivation just a month and a half in. But why? <laughs> but seriously, why? Like, why does everyone quit? Why does it feel like nobody wins? And this exact situation is why New Year's resolutions get such a bad rep. But a lot of the times, these same people that are out here wanting to start January 1st, January 1st, I'm gonna do it. January 1st, I'm gonna change. They are the ones that right now in December might be, you know, eating all the sugar, not working out, not having any regard for health whatsoever. Having the holiday cookies and the holiday cocktails, all the greasy and fat-coated yummy meals. <laughs> They're stressed, they can't sleep, and they think a date is gonna change this all. They wanna go from zero to 100. January 1st gets here. They wake up at 6 a.m., go for the green juice, hit the gym, eat healthy meals, and get a good night's rest. January 2nd, it, they do the same and the third and maybe the fourth by the end of the week They might be feeling good, but they're also missing the sugar because right now dessert is bad and, and spinach is good This exact situation is the reason why it's so easy to fall off after a short amount of time Change is not meant to happen from zero to a hundred. It's not meant to be all or nothing You know going from this nothing in December to this all in January, there's just no way that these new habits and this new lifestyle would ever stick. The way to really go about such a big change, especially when it's lifestyle, you know, it's a way of life, is to start small and to start slow. Of course, I'm speaking fully from my own experience, but when you want to make a significant change in your life, you want it to stick and be sustainable and last, right? Otherwise, what's the point of trying? What starting small and slow can look like is maybe incorporating one habit for a bit it, working on just that one thing, adding that one thing into your life for a little while, and then once that starts to stick, it becomes part of routine, it becomes more natural, then you think, okay, what is the next thing I can add into my life? Then after a while, you add the third, and so on. Little by little, your life is changing before your eyes. It does take time, but one thing at a time is how you can make it stick. For me, the first thing I changed about a poor lifestyle, we'll call it, was I started trying to work out. When I started trying to work out, I tried a lot of different things. It did take me a really long time to kind of figure it out. I tried different workouts, different times of day, different styles. The options really are endless, right? But slowly, I found what I liked. And then naturally, after I started sticking to this, and this became just part of my routine and a daily habit, I then wanted to branch out into the next thing, and for me, it was eating better. I started focusing then on food, and then I fixed my sleeping habits. Then it led more into like mindset and productivity and stuff like that. And all of these things have such a big impact on a healthy lifestyle. But that's how I was able to initially lose some weight, get in shape, change my habits and my lifestyle, and maintain that for about two years now. Of course, over the past two years, there's been ebbs and flows. There's been periods where I've done better, periods where I've done worse and slacked off. The good and the bad, but overall, in the grand scheme of things, my lifestyle is so much different than it was when I was in a poor lifestyle state, if that makes sense. I truly believe the only way to actually make it sustainable and last is slowly add these things, make them stick, and just stop trying to rush it. You know, it's like the biggest thing you can do is accept the fact that change takes time. And I know time is the last thing you wanna give, right? Like we love instant gratification. And in an ideal world, we'd have everything fast. But weight loss and a whole change of lifestyle and getting to that point where you genuinely just feel good and want to keep working at this stuff takes time because you have to work for it. And the best reward and results come from delayed gratification. Truly. It's also like, if it was so easy and happened so fast, right, more people would do it. More people would be feeling the way they want to feel, looking the way they want to feel. Because if you didn't have to put the work for it, and if it didn't take so long, and it was just that easy to get, like, the world would be so different. And with the slow change too, say maybe you want to start working out. Maybe that is the first thing you want to do. Keep in mind too, like you don't have to be hitting the gym five, six days a week. If you want, if it's brand new to you, and you know, maybe start with two to three. After a few weeks, bump it up to four. Then you can hit that five if you really want. But so not only starting with a specific category once at a time, but the degree in which you do that category, you know, if you have to start off slow, you have to start off slow. And it's better for this to take, you know, a year and then last versus you go all in, you 
you do it for two months, you quit, and then look where you are then January 2025 and 2026 and however long you can keep doing this. So this is just a reminder that anything worthwhile, any big goal, big change, big dream, it comes with hard work, it comes with obstacles, and it happens over a really long time. And always remember that you're not always going to have motivation, right? You might have the biggest motivation the first week in January just because it does feel like a fresh start. And I totally get that, you know? That's why people say, hey, I'm going to start January 1st. It's like new year, new me, new energy. Like it is such a fun feeling and you can embrace that, but that motivation is going to die down. And that's when you really have to start disciplining yourself and building those relationships and keeping the promises that you make to yourself. You know, you say if you're gonna work out three times a week for a month and you do it and you keep that promise, you're building that trust within yourself, you're building self-discipline and you know that you're gonna be able to make it happen. It is so important to keep the promises that you make for yourself because that's the easiest thing. It's easy to not follow through with the promises that are only to you because nobody else is gonna know if you fail. You know, if you don't keep a promise to someone else, well, they, they know. But if it's just with yourself, well, you're, you're the only one that knows. But that's why it's the hardest thing to do. And that's why it matters the most, because, because it's the hardest thing to do. And if you can do that, you can do so much more. And if you don't know where to start, start your research now. If you wanna start working out, you gotta get specific with it. You know, how many days a week? What are the workouts? Maybe buy a plan, something to follow that can hold you accountable. Again, you don't have to start five days in the gym. If you wanna start with two or three, I'm sure you could find a plan or modify something to follow that is a smaller split until you're able to up it. I also think trying to start out too big and too fast, not only are you more likely to quit, but you're more likely to start hating it and dreading it. You know, this example of going to the gym, say you only go two days a week, in your head it's a way easier load and you can handle it, but if you wanna start out with five right away, that second week you're gonna start dreading it. And it's all about building a positive relationship with the thing from the start. And I think starting slow is really gonna help you along the way. And you're gonna have a healthy relationship with the activity, whether it's the gym or the eating or whatever, and you're not gonna be full of resentment. Cause that's another thing that can be easy to do when you're making a big change and trying to go from zero to 100. The point is that anything that goes from zero to 100 is just not sustainable and any results, cause you might get results right away if you do go from zero to 100, you know, it could be water weight, it could be the first five pounds, whatever, but when you fall off, you're gonna regain it, you're gonna fall back, whatever, but then that cycle that you keep doing, it's gonna build such resentment. And then anytime you think about a whole health journey or whatever in the future, you're just gonna dread it, you're gonna hate it, it's gonna be bad memories, and you're gonna think about, you know, maybe some toxic things you've done in the past. So I just think it's really important to have a healthy approach, and a healthy approach starts small and starts slow. And think about it too, it's easier to start small and start slow. You know, it's gonna take you a while, but it's easier. <laughs> you know, it's so much easier to start two days in the gym versus five days in the gym. So not only is it gonna last, but it is easier, and then you can grow from there. It's such a good thing, and you just have to get over the fact that results will take a while, and that's probably the hardest part. But once you can get over that and allow yourself to start slower and create a sustainable lifestyle. Think about where you'll be in six months. Think about where you'll be in a year. If you start slow and have a healthy approach right now, think about where you'll be by this summer. Summer is always a time where people wanna like look good and whatever, so that's why I'm bringing it up. Just think about where you'll be this summer. And that should be a little bit extra motivation for you, but yeah. I am wishing you the best in your 2024. I'm always rooting for you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped. Please subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you in my next one.